It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the movies of September 18th, 1992. We've got a lot of movies to look at again today, seven movies in particular. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. Let's start off with the first movie that we have here, the biggest new release of the weekend, and that is Kurt Russell and Martin Short in Captain Ron. Isn't this great? Open ocean, uncharted islands. Who knows what's waiting for us out there? The mighty Caribbean, home of romance, adventure, and living legends like Captain Ron. Let's hear the Harvey Bug. A man of courage and dedication to whom the sea is more than a job, more than a calling. It's home. Are you kidding? Now, he's about to cast his very special spell on the Harveys. This sucks. I have worked very, very hard to plan a spontaneous adventure and Captain Goofy, hey boss, Captain Cyclops, Captain's contagious over there, is screwing it up. Ah! You know, there's gorillas in these woods. No gorillas, not here, no way. He said gorilla, not gorilla. Huge difference. Whoa, that's losing it. Captain Ron, Captain Ron. May I have the camera, please? Captain Ron doesn't mean a Ooh. thing to me. I am not jealous. <laughs> Captain Ron is teaching them the laws of the sea. Hey, get your hands off that. You want a beer, you get your own beer. Taking them to places they never dreamed of. Martin, we're in Cuba? Back to the raft! Back to the raft! And he's turning these four sailors oh, into one big happy family. I've never seen such sailors. Not in all my born days, I ain't. Every one of you is natural. The pirates are the captain! Pirates. Kurt Russell. Pirates of the Caribbean. Martin Short. Been to Disney World one too many times, have we, Captain Ron? Captain Ron. Dad! Captain Ron! Could you come up, please? Captain Ron! Cap Do you still need a reminder that this movie is called Captain Ron? Because I don't know how many more times that Martin Short has to keep saying Captain Ron to let you know that this movie is called Captain Ron. I mean, I swear to God, if you play a drinking game with how many times he says it in this trailer, along with the movie alone... You'll be drunk plastered by the end of this movie because he says a lot in this movie. And honestly, I think that's one of the reasons why this movie doesn't work out so well. Um, the concept isn't too bad here. I mean, Kurt Russell playing the title character, Captain Ron, it's actually a pretty fun role for him. I think it's one of the few things in this movie that actually still holds out pretty well. But honestly... I think the roles could, the roles could, in this could have been switched out. Like, Martin Short could have been the comedic portrayal in this, and Kurt Russell could have been the serious one in this. And maybe it could have worked into a much better movie. But as it is, I think the only thing that really sticks with this movie is Kurt Russell in here. I think he's having a ton of fun playing with this role, and he, he has some of the funnier lines in the movie. As far as the rest of the movie goes, it is pretty forgettable. I mean, Martin Short... He's he's really obnoxious in this movie, and like I said, one of the reasons why is because he just has to. Be, he's not even playing a character; he's just playing kind of a stereotype of a character. Is like, like if your biggest bit of comedy is saying the name of this, part, the title of this movie multiple times, it's not really a good character trait whatsoever. I mean, I mean, even if you look at this poster here, he doesn't even look like he's legitimately a part of this movie. It feels like they plastered him in here. I'll show you what I mean. Seriously, look at this and tell me that Martin Short is part of that picture right there. It does not look like he's a part of that picture. I think they just took a clip from the movie and just put him there, put him there with the rest of the cast. And Actually, when I really look at this more, it doesn't even look like the entire cast of this movie is really all there. I think they just... It does look like they all they took random pictures and shots from the movie and just put them together on this one poster. I don't know. Maybe that's the first time they ever do that. Because, apparent, because really, when you look at it, that's kind of how they do most movie posters nowadays. They just put all the people on the is in the cast on the poster and make it look. Don't even attempt to make it look like they're, they're all together in one shot. I mean, that is pretty much how it is. And maybe that was one of the first ones that actually did it. But um, yeah, like I said before, this movie really is not all that good. The only reason I would say watch it is because of Kurt Russell in this. But other than that, though, it's not a very good movie. It's not really all that funny. It's not really all that exciting. It is a pretty forgettable movie. So. That's Captain Ron for you. Let's go ahead and move on to the next movie that we have here, and that is Cameron Crowe's Singles. Love is a game. You distinguish yourself by not calling. Four days, he used to call me. Easy to start. It's a very nice hat you're wearing, and I don't mean that in any high school kind of way. Hard to finish. 
Linda, I left my blue t-shirt at If you can't find love, you settle for sex. I'm on the bed right now. I'm wearing something really outrageous. I think you got the wrong number, lady, but I'll be right over. In the absence of sex, you go for companionship. Uh, you want to get some dinner? Uh, how about some lunch? Have a lunch. Coffee? Water? How about some water? Soon you're just happy to have a friend. You know, in a parallel universe, we're probably a scorching couple. But in this one, neighbors. Of course, you can't sleep with friends. <laughs> Signals. You know I see other people sleep. You don't fool me. Bridget Fonda. We made the connection, and when you make the connection, it's like chemistry takes care of itself. I mean, it makes its own decisions, you know? Campbell Scott. I was just uh, nowhere near your neighborhood. Kira Sedgwick. Did I overreact? <laughs> Do you know who this is? Sheila Kelly. Could you see me next to a single guy? I've got a special feeling about you. Jim True. And Matt Dillon. Janet, you rock my world. Singles. If I make this basket, that's fate telling me to call him. Wait, did no basket mean call him or don't call him? Never mind. Directed by Cameron Crowe. This is, of course, Crowe's follow-up to Say Anything, which honestly is a much better movie than this particular film, but the movie isn't terrible by any means. In fact, it is an overall very enjoyable movie. It is very much early 1990s. I mean, you have these you have movies like this, and then you also had uh, Reality Bites, Empire Records, uh, just movies like this where you have these Gen Xers and these misadventures that they go through over the course of the movie. And overall, it is a very good movie. This is a very strong cast they have here. Bridget Fonda, Campbell Scott, Kira Sedgwick, Sheila Kelly, Matt Dillon, uh, Bill Pullman, uh, Ali Walker, Jeremy Piven, Eric Stoltz, Tom Skerritt. Uh, just a lot of good people in this movie, and there are a lot of very funny moments in here. And you do buy the relationships that all these people have in here. It is a very good film overall. It's a little too formulaic for some parts of it, but nothing to the point where it ruins the movie overall. It is still a very enjoyable movie, and like I said, it's not as good to say anything, but it does show that Cameron Cr It's still one of Cameron Crowe's... Overall, I mean, overall, Cam when I really think about it, Cameron Crowe made a lot of good movies. Because I think his worst films came later on down the road with stuff like We Bought a Zoo or Aloha. But um, these mo these first couple movies overall were really solid films. And this is definitely a very solid film. Probably the most underrated of the fil early films that he did. Uh, if you haven't seen Singles, definitely check it out. You might f get s get taken back to the to 1992 with it, and it's a, it is still a very good movie that still kind of holds up almost 30 years later. Well, 30 years later, I should say, but um, you get what I'm talking about here. Um, with that said, on to the next movie, and that is Woody Allen's Husbands and Wives. Before we go out to dinner, we want to tell you something. Oh. Jack and I are splitting up. What don't do anything. Do don't make a big deal out of it, okay? Because we're both fine. Are you we're okay. Serious? No, we are. We're fine. We're fine. You, get a, uh, you don't break it up. That's insane. You're, you're Jack and Sally. You got two kids. So Jack never, never gave you an inkling, huh? No. How did you meet someone so fast? Well, I used to eat red meat every day, and then I gave it up, and then I had some again recently, and Look, I, I was totally have, blown. We, I can't get my mind around this. This is what you leave Sally for? I, it's like your IQ is suddenly in oh, remission. Please. You know, Are you ever attracted to other women? So how do you manage to write something so deep? I, is your whole family stormy and tempestuous? Or? Oh, God, I'm blushing, right? I thought it was an, it was an experiment. I, I didn't think it was final. I didn't realize you were having an affair! Listen, if you're having some kind of personal thing... Really? I'm okay. I, I, I don't really think I can do this. I'm feeling upset. What are you upset about? I saw Sally the other night. She's dating some guy. So what's the deal? I mean, are they, I mean, it's, are they seeing one another? Oh. Okay. What's the rush? <laughs> don't tell me you don't flirt because I've seen you do it. I sometimes think of living in, uh, in Paris. It's like moving Paris. to Europe. That's just a flirting technique. You couldn't survive off the island of Manhattan for more than 48 hours. Who's this? Who's this? This is, this is my husband. It's none of your business. Please none of my leave business. right now. I don't want to leave. Leave right all now. Right. Am I all right? All right. What the hell? Are you? Who are you? Is he living here? I do love the way you write. I had some criticisms, but overall... You told me, you told me, you know, you told me it was a great book. 
Yeah, it's wonderful, and I never said great. My sixth sense said that you were that you were not stable, but you on the surface you were. But now that we're having all kinds of problems, you 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 you're not stable. You were on the surface, but not really. This, this whole thing is becoming very clear to me. Oh yeah, this is definitely a Woody Allen movie, all right. Uh, interesting note here, this was actually the first Woody Allen movie that was not released by United Artists or Orion Pictures since 1969, but that was of course because Orion Pictures was falling into bankruptcy and United Artists had already been uh, put it, pushed into MGM at the time. But uh, also of note here, this actually re was released in theaters shortly after Woody Allen and Mia Farrow's romantic and professional partnership came to an end, and this was the last of the 13 films they did together. And, um... Kind of fits the overall feel of the movie. I mean, if you like Woody Allen movies, if you like their st the style and the bits of co the comedy, the dramatic elements to it, it's all here, and it's still pretty good for the most part. This is definitely a huge step up compared to Shadows and Fog that we looked at earlier in the year, which was a huge misfire, but great cast. Woody Allen, Blythe Danner, Judy Davis, Mia Farrell, Juliette Lewis, uh, Liam Neeson, Sidney Pollack. Just a great cast overall. These ca The relationships are very well written. It's just a ton of. It's just a very good film overall, and like I said, if you like Woody Allen pr at his prime, this is definitely right up right up your alley. It's a very good film, a very under. It's maybe one of his most underrated films because it didn't do so well at the box office at the time, but still a pretty good movie overall. Like I said, if you like Woody Allen, you're definitely gonna enjoy this movie. I like Woody Allen movies. This is definitely right up my alley. So, that's Husbands and Wives. Let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, and that is School Ties. weird i feel like this movie doesn't get the attention that i think it deserves but at the same time it has had a legacy to it because you've seen this you've seen a lot of this movie being parodied in specifically family guy did a joke with, with school ties with brendan frazier's with brian as brendan frazier's character screaming coward at the is at the the uh dormitory but other than that though not a lot of people really talk about this movie but really i kind of feel like they do because this is actually a really damn good movie i was watching this movie Really thinking to myself, okay, this movie hasn't, I don't, it doesn't have that good of a legacy to it, even though I've seen it a couple of times in parody, but maybe it's not, maybe it's something where it's just like, it has just those few elements that actually do, that work, but the rest of it's kind of mediocre. Overall, the movie is really damn good, and it's mostly because of the great performances that they have in here. I mean, Brendan Fraser alone in this movie is more than worth it to watch it, him really putting his all into this movie. I'm really surprised that he didn't get some kind of awards consideration for this because he really sells this movie, and he does a fantastic job here. You also have Chris O'Donnell in here, 
uh, Matt Damon in one of his early film roles. You also have Cole Hauser, uh, Amy Long Crane, uh, Zelko Ivanek, uh, Anthony Rapp, uh, Ben Affleck in one of his early film roles. And it's a nicely shot movie, too. The cinematography by Freddie Francis is very well done. You've got some great music by Maurice Jarry. The, the script was written, co-written by Dick Wolf of Law & Order fame. I mean, they got a really good, ta- really good talent all over this movie, and it shows in the final product. This movie really, I think, is a very underrated film. If you haven't seen this movie, please go check out School Ties. You will not be disappointed by it. It's really a very surprising and very effective film, mostly because of the great performances, including Brendan Fraser in the leading role. It's a fantastic film. I can't recommend it enough. School Ties, definitely check it out. So... On that note, let's go ahead and move on to the next movie that we have here, and that is Oliver Stone's production, South Central. This is the story of a father and son. Don't go soft on me, man. Now, I know you got a kid and all, but you still do, ain't you? It's a story of loyalty divided between violence and love. Between death. Bobby, you didn't. And life. Look, you give me some names. Give them to me right now and I'll cut you a soft deal. Your boy. Yeah. How old? Well, he's three in that picture. Well, he was ten. So where were you? The boy's daddy. I was in here. That man is in prison, or dodging prison, and his kids suffer. You said it was my fault he got shot? Me. And you. We're brothers, and we got to be there for our children. Go find your boy. Save his life. Takes my life, I'll do it. I am somebody. I may be poor, but I am somebody. Respect me. Hey, you guys know Jimmy Justin? Protect me. Right here, cuz. Never neglect me. And the child is his mama now, and Deuce is his daddy. Let him go down! I am somebody. Nobody will save us for us but us. What I want is my boy. I'm your daddy, Jimmy. South Central. Something's got to change. I feel like we just saw the entire movie there. I mean, I haven't seen this movie. I can't really comment on it too much, but that trailer definitely looks like something where you see the entire movie overall. But then again, maybe that's not the case because, like I said, I haven't seen the film. I can't really comment on it too much, but, I mean, it doesn't look bad whatsoever. In fact, from all the stuff I've seen, it's gotten a lot of critical acclaim. And when this movie came out, this director, Steven Anderson, was up there with Quentin Tarantino as Tim Robbins as some of the best new filmmakers in Hollywood. But unfortunately, I don't think he ever did anything of note after this movie. He made a couple of other films, Dead Man Can't Dance and then Cash in 2010. That was the last movie he directed. But uh, other than that, though, I haven't seen anything else that this guy has done. Like I said, the movie doesn't look too bad. The performances overall look pretty good. Glenn Plummer is in this. You've seen him on ER. And like I said, it's produced by Oliver Stone. And... Like I said, it doesn't look too bad. It does look like a movie that kind of got overshadowed by a lot of the other movies of this type at the time period. Like stuff like Boys in the Hood, Juice, and then Menace to Society. Just to name a couple of movies that came out in between this time period. But again, could be a, could actually be one of those underrated gems that not a lot of people really talk about. That trailer I don't think did a very good job of really st- making it stand out over some of the other movies, but... You know, trailers can lie to you pretty easily, and maybe there's more to this movie than I would have thought there would have been, so... I don't know, maybe I'll check it out one day, but uh, as for right now, I'm just going by that trailer. The trailer didn't look that impressive, but I am curious to check it out, just on the acclaim that it got out alone, so... 
that's South Central. Let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, and that is Whoopi Goldberg and Serafina. Our nation was searching for truth and freedom. The schools are your only chance. If you don't want education, do not come to school. Two extraordinary women showed us the way. She tells us the truth, and they love her because she's crazy. History is so beautiful, it makes you cry. <laughs> Through music, she opened our eyes to life. You will do all the work, and I go to sleep. Have we got it all worked out then? Yeah. Through dance, she gave us hope for the future. Everyone laughing and singing. I like that. And to a young girl named Sarafina. What do you want, mistress? She opened her heart. I want the war to be over. What about the teachers? I want the hate to be over. Any rotten apples there? I want to come home to kindness. We have to support each other. I want them to have a sense of pride in themselves. You're playing with fire. Through her inspiration, people can defeat the armies. They discovered the courage to change the world. Freedom is coming tomorrow. Get ready, man. Listen to these voices. Academy Award winner, Ubi Goldberg and Lele Di Kumalo as Sarafina. Celebrating our freedom. Coming to screens, June 15, 2006. So kind of like with South Central, this is a movie that I haven't seen. But overall, the trailer for it was not really all that impressive. But I've actually heard some decent things about this movie. I've seen some decent things from the from the reviews for this movie that I've seen on Rotten Tomatoes. But this is one of those interesting movies. Like it came out in '92. It came out around the time of the Rodney King, LA of the LA riots due to what happened to Rodney King. And actually, Whoopi Goldberg, when she was on the Daily Show many years after this movie came out, she said that. The movie was not successful because of that, which I don't know if I want to say. I don't know if I want to say that's because of what it is, but the movie overall was a big success in South Africa. Apparently, it's because I think of it's because I think what happened. You see, you heard in the trailer of the date June sixteenth, two thousand six, and I think it was because I think that was a re-release trailer that I got there. But um, I mean, the movie itself doesn't look that bad at all. In fact, it looks kind of interesting. Like, it's a different movie for Whoopi Goldberg to star in. And um, I haven't heard a lot of people really say anything about it, but it doesn't look like a bad movie overall. In fact, it looks like a very solid movie that, like with South Central, I'll definitely check. Out, have to check out one day because I am curious to see how this movie plays out. I mean, it looks something very different for Whoopi Goldberg to star in. And you also have uh, John Caney, who was also in uh, Later Be Seen in Captain America Civil War, and a Black Panther, and also the Lion King remake that came out recently. So, um, yeah, it's a movie that I'll definitely check out one day. It's not something I'm going to rush out to see right away, but my interest is very peaked by what I'm seeing from this trailer, so that's what I'm definitely going to check out at some point, and probably with the last movie that we have here as well, which is Tim Roth in Jumping in the Boneyard. What have you been doing yourself for the last three years? Like what? Come on, man. You know what I've been doing? This is your family now! To be honest with you, I'm having enough trouble as it is just hanging around for full moon. You thought about getting him any help? I thought maybe by coming back here I could shake him up a little. Look at that kid. Too sure it's working out though. What you looking for? I'm not looking for nothing. All right, man, you don't want to do business with me, that's fine. Your boy here looks like he wants to do some business. How much you suffering? Uh, you still see that girl, Cassidy? No. You don't come here without me knowing. You don't come and see him without me Shut your mouth for a minute so I can say something. Don't tell me to shut up. I always make everything sound so easy. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying, if you want to do this, we can beat it with you. You believe in anything that fool ass tells you, don't you? 
Relax, right? I can't just roll off with you and leave her not. Not without telling her. Damn it, Danny, I'm fucking do this. We gotta do it tonight. You won't be all alone, Dad. Nobody but you. It's what Daddy today. Where? What do you see? This is one of those movies that I literally knew nothing about before I looked up on Box Office Mojo to see what it was, but it's another one of those movies that I'm very, very curious about. I mean, Tim Roth, one of his early film roles, and you also have this actor, Alexis Arquette, who I've never heard of before, but, um, I mean, I mean, he does look like he's given a good performance in here. Maybe the biggest surprise of all is Denitra Vance. If you haven't heard of that name before, she was on SNL in the, 19, in the middle mid-1980s. She's been in a couple of other movies. Some of them we've talked about already, like Limit Up and War of the Roses and Little Man Tate. But um, looks like she's given a very different performance in this than the usual comedic performance that I've seen her in. It's very intriguing. You also see Samuel Jackson in there as well. I knew nothing about this movie until I looked up the stuff to look to look this movie up tonight. But I will say, my interest has definitely peaked in this movie because of what I'm seeing here. This looks like a pretty good movie overall. I don't know if this has actually been released on DVD before. If, if even if it has, it's probably one of those limited edition ones. Like you go to Amazon and get a burn on demand disc or something, and you can find it on streaming. And I'm gonna try to find it because I do really want to see this movie. It's kind. Kind of like with also South Central and Serafina. Maybe I'll do like a triple feature of these one day. But um, my interest has definitely peaked on this one. I've no, I know nothing about this movie, but my interest has definitely peaked. If anyone knows about this movie, please let me know in the comments below. Um, so yeah, jumping at the boneyard. That's that's pretty much all I got for you on that one. So on that note, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. Next time we meet, we'll wrap up September 1992. We've got four movies to look at, some notable ones here, including Michael Mann's The Last of the Little Mohicans, starring Daniel Day-Lewis, Billy Crystal's directorial debut and starrer, Mr. Saturday Night, John Landis's horror comedy in the style of American Werewolf in London, Innocent Blood, and also Dan Zahn. So four movies to look at. We'll look at those on Sunday. Of course, we'll have a new movie stuff episode for you tomorrow, and then Stairway to Seven also comes up this week as well. And uh, some other good fun here coming up on this channel, so be on the lookout for that. But until then... Thank you very much for watching this show. If you want to see more videos like this one, please go ahead and hit the playlist on the next page. Check out the previous episode. And I will see you guys next time for another episode. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And until then, as always, take care.